Hi everybody, Rob here again from the Department of Education at Cape Breton University. In this video, we're going to follow up on a previous video that I recorded that shows you how to create meetings for meeting with your own group in Teams for working on group projects. The skills that we're going to show in this video, we're going to look at some of the basics of participating in a team meeting. And this will be true for you, whether you're meeting with your own group of classmates to plan a group project or whether you are meeting as part of a live scheduled class with the rest of your classmates. Now, I'm in a meeting here right now with Laura. And one of the first things you want to do when you join a meeting, you're given, you're given an option to join with your mic and your video on and off. It's best practice to actually turn your mic on and off, uh, turn your mic and your video off before you join that meeting. You don't want to join with the mic and the and the uh, camera on because you might jump in in the middle of somebody's conversation if the media if the meeting is already started and you don't want to interrupt them. Uh, you don't want to have 20 or 30 of your classmates joining in the middle of a class all within the same few seconds and all these different audio feeds coming in. So it's just polite to join with your audio and your video turned off and then to wait until it's your turn to talk before you turn your mic on. It's also a good practice. Now we know that we can turn our video feeds on. I've got my camera turned on now, but it's actually not going to work properly because I'm using my webcam to record this video in my video editing software. So I just turned it off again. It's a good idea not to turn your webcam on, just to leave your profile pic showing in your class meeting, unless you are the presenter and, uh, and you're invited to turn your camera on. Leave your video feed off. It's going to save the bandwidth for you. So your team's meeting is not going to slow down and freeze up your computer. And it's going to save the bandwidth for the rest of your classmates. If you have 30 or 40 people in your class meeting and everybody's got their webcam on, that's a lot of data coming into your computer. So if you just turn that off and you have your profile picture or the couple of little initials for your name, if you don't have a profile picture set, then that is going to save you that bandwidth. And it's also going to be good for your own privacy sake. You never know who's going to walk in the room behind you, your brother or sister or an aunt and uncle, your dog jumping around going crazy. Sometimes you don't want to have all that craziness going on in the background while you're in the middle of class. Just turn that webcam off unless you're the actual presenter. Same with your mic. Turn it off unless you are the one speaking. Another good uh, tip to keep in mind You'll notice in my video right here, I'm wearing a headset microphone. It's a good idea to get yourself a good headset microphone for your class meetings. Typically, the microphone that's built into your laptop computer or your desktop computer is not, it's what we call an omnidirectional mic. It picks up the entire room. My headset mic is what we call a unidirectional mic. It's only picking up the sound coming out of my mouth, the sound directly in front of the microphone. So it's going to cut down on a lot of that background noise. Also, the mic on your laptop tends to be very close to the speakers on your laptop. So if you have 30 some odd people in your class and they're all talking and the sound is coming through your speakers and your mic is turned on, then all of those voices are going to feed back into your mic as if they were in the room with you and create what we call feedback or distortion. Uh, it creates a feedback loop and it can get very distracting and annoying for the rest of your classmates. Now to turn your mic on and off during your class meeting, you just need to hover your mouse over the bottom area of the screen. You'll see this menu bar pop up and you'll see your camera button. Mine is turned off right now. You'll see the mic button. I can turn it on and off. Quick tip, once you have selected your mic button and you've turned it on and off once with your mouse, you can now use your space bar to turn it on and off. So it really speeds things up if you want to turn your mic on and off and start talking in the middle of a class meeting. Now, with 30 people in your class or a large group of students working on a group project together, it can get quite chaotic trying to determine whose turn it is to speak. What I like to recommend to my students is to use the hand raise feature during class. This can also work during your group meetings. Again, if you hover your mouse over the lower area of your screen, you see this toolbar, you see a little hand here. Click on that, your hand is raised. So Laura now should be seeing a little hand raised next to my face, where Laura's face is appearing here in the middle of my screen because we're the only two people in this meeting. Laura would be seeing my face and she would be seeing my hand raised next to that. 
I can also click on the participants area here. That's going to show me everybody who is in the meeting with us right now. And you'll see that my hand is raised here. Don't forget after you are done taking your turn to click on that lower your hand button to remove that or the meeting host is going to think that you're still trying to ask a question. In addition to the little uh, participants uh, button down here, you can click on the show conversation. It's going to bring up a chat area so you can see our entire chat history from the past few videos that we've been creating and I can uh, type right in here. I can type a new message and Laura will see that message pop up if she's in the chat area. If she's not in the chat area, she will see a little um, a little icon appear over this chat message right here that lets her know that there's a new chat message and she can go to the chat area and see that. Now, sometimes when you are the presenter in a Teams meeting, either when you're planning a group project with your classmates, or if you're in a class, maybe you're giving a presentation in class, your group is done and it's time to present, you may need to share your screen and share some of those uh, resources that you've prepared or those presentation materials. It could be a PowerPoint presentation that you've created. You can do that, again, by hovering your mouse over the bottom area of the screen, you're going to see this menu bar pop up. You want to look for this share button in the middle. If I click on that, I get a bunch of options. So I can share my screen, my desktop, my window, a particular window. I can share a PowerPoint presentation I've been working on recently. So I'm going to click on share my screen. My screen is now presenting this entire screen area here is now presenting so Laura can see that. When I'm done, I can click stop presenting. This little button down here, I click on that and it stops sharing my screen. One other thing that you might want to uh, take advantage of during your live Teams meetings is some of the other tools that are available to you in Teams. Maybe you want to take advantage of your file storage area or the chat area or add some new tabs and some new resources, web-based resources for everyone to share. You can do that during a live Teams meeting. You can back out of this meeting area here. You can use these back arrows up on the top or you can click on the Teams area here or the chat area. It's going to bring you back into your main Teams space. You'll see that Laura is now in the meeting with me up in the corner. And I'm now in my general area. I can go to one of my channels if I want. And you'll see up here that there are some tabs already. The posts, our discussion posts, and there's a files area. So I can actually share files with Laura if I wanted to. Uh, so I can come back here and find a file that I want to share. Maybe I want to share these fall course links. I'll share that file. That's now available here. And uh, Laura and I can both open these. Uh, in this case, this is a picture, not a Word document, but we can both look at this and see this picture.